Greetings YouTubers and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be replacing a couple of lower ball joints on this 2008 Dodge Avenger XST. Sounds pretty fancy, right? Yep, it's a pretty nice car, but it does have some problems. And these ball joints here are going to be the first thing we tackle. So let's get her inside where she's a little bit warmer and let's start this work. Alright, a couple of things before we start this job. Uh, here is a quick look at the ball joints. I picked both these up. On eBay for about $30 free shipping. You get the little clips that come with it here, and also you get the little grease fittings. So these are serviceable ball joints. I'm not sure what's in this vehicle. Pro probably not server serviceable ball joints. They probably are a factory. And also the other thing is you might want to have a 21 piece or so ball joint remover kit, or you can go to the parts store and just rent one. Uh, there's a couple of ways we can get this uh, job done. Now, I've seen some guys online take the whole hub and spindle assembly off and just take a hammer and knock the ball joint out and just kind of knock it out from the top and pull it down. But the thing with that is you're taking all that apart. So what we're going to attempt to do is just take the lower ball joint control arm off and see if we can get our tool up in there and just simply press this out and push the new one in. If we can do that... That's going to save us from taking all this stuff apart, the hub, the brakes. We won't have to take any of that off. We'll just basically uh, be doing a couple of steps there and finishing up like that. So we're going to try to attempt that. Uh, you knock yourself out if you want to do that. If you don't have this tool, I can understand you can get these fairly cheap. Or you can go to the parts store and just rent them out, just so you know. All right, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and get the rear wheels blocked. And since we're going to work on the driver's side first, go ahead and turn your steering wheel to the left. And now it's a great time to go ahead and break your uh, lug nuts loose, set your wheels on the ground or whatever. Now we'll just go ahead and loosen these two, but leave them on. Now the reason we turned our wheel to the left on this particular car, it's a low profile car, it sits real close to the ground. I got my jack up under my lower control arm air. This will give me a lot of room here to just go ahead and get this thing up in the air. But if you keep the wheel straight, uh, you're going to have a hard time getting a low profile jack up under this vehicle unless you have a really big one where you can slide up under. But I'm using a smaller one and this should work just fine. So up we go. And just a word of caution, you can see how my jack is trying to go sideways because that lower A-arm is kind of going up and down. So be very careful about that. Sometimes these jacks can slip out, but for now, I've got a jack stand behind it there. And I have a secondary jack stand just behind that. And off comes the wheel. And there is our ball joint, and as you can see right here, if I shake this, you can see it moving. Not good. probably even hear it so this is what we're going to be replacing all right now earlier in the video I had said that some people take this whole system off here and redo it and some people actually get this vehicle high enough up in the air where they could actually just stick this on here and pop this off well unfortunately I can't do that I'm going to have to go ahead and take the whole unit off most people doing this don't have a way to get their car way up in the air they don't have a big lift like a lot of these uh, big uh, high dollar in shops so I'm doing this basically how most uh, shade read mechanics would do it, or the uh, do-it-yourselfer would do it. And it looks like we're going to go ahead and take all this off here. But you can see, by the time I put this on here and get my worm screw up in there, it's not going to be enough room. I, it, it's hitting the bottom of the floor here, and I've got this up about two feet. So if you have a shop, if you can get this up six or eight feet, then you could probably get an impact tool under here and take this nut off and everything else. But still... Nevertheless, we'll go ahead and change it out. It's not that big of a deal. It's just a little more work. All right, the first thing we're going to do is get this sway bar in link here. You can see it goes all the way to the bottom, to the top here. The reason we're going to do this first because we still have everything hooked up. And these usually give a lot of folks trouble. They end up having to cut them off. But if you can't get it off, you have to cut them off. This way you'll know uh, maybe you'll have to go ahead and order these so you'll have them when you're done on the job. Or you can just go ahead and get it off now and continue. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a little uh, heat. We're going to take a torch and kind of heat this up and take my impact wrench here and kind of just pop this bolt off. Now on the center piece here, there is a 5 millimeter Allen socket. If you clean this out really well, this will usually hold that and you can get in there and get the, uh, and you can get a ratchet in there to hold this and you can actually turn this whole thing if you want to save your sway bar end link. Uh, 
All right, she's good and hot. Let's go ahead and take our impact. The reason I'm taking the impact to it is because this will just make it a little bit faster for me and the video. And how about that? All right, so we'll stick that r ratchet on there. And there we go. And you can see it coming off. This is one way you can save these because I've broken a lot of these, but I've gotten older and I've gotten more patient. And when you do that, you can actually save these. You don't have to order any more parts. So that little bit of heat really helped to get this off. This was the only thing I was really, really worried about because I didn't want to have to go out and spend $20 on new sway bar inlinks, and these were just fine. So. so that's how we got that out. Now, one important tip here, make sure that this is clean and you're using the correct Allen socket. That's the key. It's got to fit in there nice and snug. That way you can hold that while you turn that when you're using something like this. So, All right, so we got that out. That's great. And now we'll simply just knock this out of the way. Actually, I got a tire tool here. I'm just going to pull down on it and take it out like that. So. All right, so that's out. And check that, and it seems to be in pretty good shape. And now we'll go ahead and take our brake calipers off here. These are two 14-millimeter bolts. One on the top, one on the bottom. And now we'll pull these out of the way. And the next thing we need to do, and where your brake line comes up, we have a couple bolts here we have to take out of a bracket. These are 13 millimeter. Got to get both of these out. We can release this whole line. The top bolt is for your ABS bracket, so you got to be very careful with that. We'll drop that down out of the way. And the bottom one there is for the regular brake line. We'll get this out. And there that is. That's out of the way. And we'll let this brake line kind of hang down out of the way. And now we'll pull a brake caliper out of the way and we'll let this uh, rest on something. I'll have to get a wire and kind of hold this up or get a block of wood. And there we go. We got our caliper resting on a block of wood there. And now we take out our brake caliper bolts. These are 18 millimeter. One on the top. And one on, and, and one on the bottom. And out comes the bottom one. There it is. And here comes the top one. And there it is. And we'll put this off to the side and we'll pull off our brakes and check those brakes. And you can see these brakes are down to nothing. Uh, they need to be replaced. See this all the time. People just don't want to spend money, but uh, that's another story. And now we'll just take our rotor off, check it. Looks pretty good. Now here's something you don't have to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to go ahead and take this dust shield off. Very easy to do, just a couple 10 millimeter bolts, because there's something very important behind here that we have to take off. And I want you to make sure you see it. Yeah, it's cold in here. I spent a lot of cold nights in here making my YouTube channel. That's what you see there. Got a little bit of fog, me breathing. Now we've got one more here to take off. At least they made these dust covers uh, easy to take off on this car. Not Ford. <laughs> you have to take basically a whole wheel off to get it off and the axle. So we'll get this out of the way. Put this off to the side. And now the reason I did that is check this out right there. If I can zoom in just a little bit, you can see a nut right here. This is your ABS. You do not want to break this sensor. So this is... Uh, why I took that dust shield off just for you guys. A couple minutes worth of work, but it was well worth it for you. And we're going to make sure we get this out of here without breaking it. Because these things are pretty expensive. And we'll pop this little plastic tang off. The top here, get it out of the way. And now we'll gently just kind of pry this out and get it out of the way. Alright, I think you can see that. Just take your time at it and it'll come out. There we go. If you pry, pry too hard on it, it'll it'll snap. Because see how long this is? You can't really turn this at an angle and just kind of clean it off a little bit and look at it. All right, so now we'll just take this wire and we'll push it back out of the way so it doesn't get damaged. And now we're going to go ahead and take our axle nut off. This is a one and one quarter inch socket. Now, you can actually take this nut off while the tire's on the ground. It's whatever your preference is, but since I have an impact gun, it makes it a little bit easier. But you can do this with a standard breaker bar while it's on the ground. That's probably your best option. And, and I did put some grease on there, let it soak.
there we go. It wouldn't have taken that long, actually, if I had had it outside on the ground. Uh, my impact wrench is not as good as it used to be, but it did bring it loose, and you can see there's the nut. And so, someone's worked on this before. Some of the threads are a little messed up there, so I think that's probably also why it came off a little slow. But nevertheless, you can try to break this loose while it's on the ground. It would be probably better for you. And then you can turn it around and screw it back on a couple turns. Just tap it. Make sure the axle's loose, and our axle is loose, so we're good there. And now we'll take our 18 millimeter nut off of our tie rod in here. And I always put oil on them because it makes them come loose a lot easier, as you can see here. And there that is. Pretty easy. Now on this tie rod end, you can usually just take a hammer and hit this, or you can actually get a tool, so I'm just going to use a hammer. There we go. So put that off to the side. And now we'll go ahead and take our bottom ball joint nut off. It's also an 18 millimeter. All right, and there that is. And now we take our upper strut bolts off. This is a 7 8 nut. And I'm just simply using a thumb wrench to hold it from turning. And before we take the nut all the way off, take a hammer and just tap it a little bit. Verify that it's going to come out. And there that is. And put paint on one side so you'll know which side these bolts go in. For instance, this here will go forward like that. And the same thing with the bottom one here. Now at this point, just take the nut off. Before you take the nut off, loosen this up. Verify. And we'll leave the nut like that on there for now. And what we got to do next is take a hammer and just hit this bottom ball joint so we can pull this apart. Sometimes it works. Sometimes you got to use a tool. But we'll see if this works this way. All right, so that worked. Hammer's got to be pretty heavy on, on that. Now we can go ahead and finish taking off our bolt on the top here. Tap this out. Kind of hold it with your hand a little bit so it doesn't move too much. And our axle is ready to come out. You can see I've got it pushed out. Now we'll simply just lift up, push down. Pull the axle out of the way. And out she is. Just like that. And there's the ball joint that's bad. So, wasn't too bad. So, there you go. So, I like it when a plan comes together. Alright, so we've got this clip we've got to pull out. And uh, my clip, I had to actually spin it over and to take a screwdriver and flip it around right here. This one was in there sideways. So, go ahead and get this out real quick. All right, so that's out. All right, so here we go. Uh, that's my setup. Got a big cup here, and I got actually the tool resting on the ball joint because the problem is there's not a lot of room in this particular uh, spindle here, which is kind of odd. Most of the time you have a lot of room here, but this should work, so we'll go ahead and see if we can get this loose. I'm using a big socket on the end of it here, a 7 8 there we go, it's gone. I don't know if you can see it or not there, but... Alright, so... That's about as far as I can get that. The problem with vehicles nowadays, each manufacturer makes their own tool for a ball joint or whatever. If you buy a universal ball joint kit, uh, it's hard to sometimes to make things work the way you want. So, see it's partially up, and this is what I used. So, it worked pretty good and held up pretty nicely. So, I think I can just take a hammer and knock the rest of that out there. Probably make it a little bit easier. There she went, flying across the floor. Let me go get it. Yep, 
All right, so there it is. Hear that? Not good. So you can see right here, this is the problem you get into sometimes. So what I'll do is put the other ball joint in, the new one. I'll grease this up really good, and I'll get it in most of the way and probably just tap it in with a hammer, and we'll be done with this side. So, uh... So this worked pretty good. Alright, so we're putting the ball joint in. There's the new ball joint. I've got some grease on it. This is a little sketchy. This side's no problem. This side's a problem because the ball joint is big, actually bigger than this piece back here. And if you notice, there's really not a lot of room. So we're going to push it in as far as we can, which is not going to be too far. Right about there. And I think we can just take a big socket and a hammer and drive it the rest of the way on there. Because these actually go in pretty easily. So take that off here and I'll show you what I mean. Now I've seen this a couple of times on other vehicles. You can see how it's kind of started. And right here where the ball joint comes up, it hits the tool. I don't really have a tool that will fit on there. I've got one that will fit on there, but the problem is right back here in the back, you can see how this is out this way. It actually will keep this, uh, when this ball joint gets pushed up, the tool is still going to hit right here on the ball joint. So uh, there's not a lot of room in the back. On the sides, it's no problem. So we'll go ahead and lock it in the best way we can. Okay, as you can see, I got it started, and uh, if I take my hammer and tap on my uh, ball joint tool here, I don't want to ruin it, but I can tap on it, and you can see it's going in, so I'm just going to take a piece of wood, do it this way, so I don't damage the tool itself, it just knock the rest of the way in, there we go. Alright, there you can see it, it's actually in, and there's a look at that, all I gotta do is put my key in, and uh, put my grease fitting on, and it's done, so uh, just be aware of that, you may have to work around inside to here to get this up in there without damaging, but it's on, so wasn't too bad. Okay kiddos. It's all back together, and you can see i got my clip on there, got my grease fitting on, it's all greased up. And all I have to do now is go ahead and slide this back on. I'm not going to show you every step, but you get the idea. And I'm actually going to do the other side, so uh, I guess we'll end the video here. I want to keep it kind of short for you guys. It's pointless for me to show you how to put all this back on, so uh, I just wanted to make a quick video here and show you guys that you can do these uh, ball joints. They're not all that bad if you've got a ball joint presser. It really makes it a lot easier and so forth. So there's some tips for you. Hopefully this will help you out. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know where you're watching from. And until my next video, guys, thanks for watching. And I will see you later.